Good morning and welcome to Scottsdale Christian Church. Please stand and worship our Lord with us. Your love is strong, it is furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wild, and it's waking hearts to life. Your love is deep, your love is wide, and it covers us. Your love is fierce, your love is strong, it is furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wild, and it's waking hearts. Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. Believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our 
children are defended, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glory. i 
for this Sunday. Thank you for this music and this praise and this worship, that you love us so much. We are who you say we are through Jesus Christ, God. And that's out of your love and your endless desire to give us the mercy and the grace that we do not deserve. Thank you so much for the message we're about to hear, God. We just pray, Holy Spirit, just pour through Tom, pour through the words, pour through your word, God, and help us each and every one of us, God, to sit here with an open heart, that regardless of what we're facing, regardless of what we're going through, God, where our bodies might be failing, or if there's things to lift up to you, God, may you just have all the glory in it. May we be open to hearing your word and knowing that it is for us that you give all of this, God, because we are who you say we are in Jesus Christ. And we lift this message and this praise and this worship up to you in his name. We thank you endlessly for this love, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. My little microphone thing is not working right. There you go. <laughs> well, we've been doing this series on the Trinity. Well, this morning is the last morning of that. And so I hope that we've been able to learn a little bit more about it, about who God is, what each of the Trinity 
parts are and how they interact with us in our lives. This morning, I want us to look at it a little differently. I want us to take what we've learned over the last few weeks, and I want us to figure out a way to put that into practice, how we can experience God. Experience all of God. And I think that's one of the, the big lessons of the Trinity. It, it breaks it down in a way that we can understand it and use it and truly experience God in all ways. We've seen that the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And so this morning, how do those play together and the one thing I want us to truly remember that all three are God. And that all three have always been and always will be. If we look at Revelations 1.8, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Psalms 90 verse 2 says, before the mountains were born or you were, you were brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God has always been and always will be. So as we look at the Trinity, in the back of your notes again, there's that little diagram where it talks about who the Trinity is. We see the Son, we see the Father, we see the Spirit, and we've spent the last few weeks looking at each of those. But we see that they all are God. That God is everything. Does God need to be all three of these? No. God is God. I think the Trinity and the way he breaks that down for us is much like what he's done for us in the Bible. It's not for his benefit. It's for our benefit. God is so big and so undescribable that it's hard for us to comprehend who he is and what he is and what he can do. So he's given us this way of understanding him through his word and through he, how he shows himself to us. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. This is the way we get to experience God. This is the type of relationship we understand. It's in our DNA. He put it there. He put it there so that we could understand what a father is, what a parent is, through understanding what love is. Because God the Father, he's love. We understand that. God put that inside of us. 1 John 4, 16 says, and, we, and as we know and rely on the love, of God, the love God has for us, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God the Father. Father being that example of love to us. 1 John 4, 8 says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Again, we see love. The Father is love. It's in our DNA. But not only is he a father to us, he's a good father. I think in this world we've mangle that word a little bit. We think of a father, some of us were lucky and had a good father, so that's not such a bad thing, but some wasn't so lucky. But God, the Father, is a loving Father for us all. He's the example of what a father should be and how a father should act. And if you don't have a father like that here, you do. God the Father is that Father. Isaiah 64, 8 says, Yet the Lord, yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all we are all at we are all the work of your hand. You are our Father. We are your clay. We are your children. 
Matthew 6, 8 says, Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask it. How many of you as parents have known what your children need when they didn't even know what they needed? Well, that's what the God the Father is to us. He knows what we need before we need it. And the reason you as parents know that is because God made you in his image. And we, too, get to be good fathers and good parents if we rely on God to be our example. Matthew 6, 26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or weep or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Think about your own children. Think about your own parents. What was the most important thing to you and to them? Taking care of your children. If he takes care of the birds, what will he do for us? But there was something that separated us from that love of the Father. It's called sin. Sin came and ripped us apart from that love by our own choosing. But like any good father, he wants us back. He wants to rebuild that relationship with us. He wants to bridge that gap that sin has caused between us. And we can't do that on our own. Because God can't live with sin. And there had to be, he wanted a way, he knew he wanted a relationship with each and every one of us. And so he made a way. Because he loves us. Because God the Father is love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God the Father sent God the Son to fill that gap between us and God that sin had created because he loved us. Jesus The Son is our way back in the good graces of God the Father. Where we can experience his love again. We can experience his guidance again. And we can benefit from him taking care of us again. Through Jesus, we get to rejoin God and the family. Jesus came to be our example. Not only to die for us, we know that, but he also came to show us how to live as human beings in this flesh, in this earth. John 13 says, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. This is Jesus speaking. For uh, for that that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do... You should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. He had just washed the disciples' feet here, taken the spot of the lowest servant. When he says that we are to follow his example, it's not just in this instant. He's talking about his life, how he lived, how he fought, how he proclaimed God. He showed us how to live life. He was tempted, as we are, but he overcame. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, not 1.11. It's, I had to put the thing in the wrong place in your bulletin. <laughs> it's 11.1. 1. That was some weird verse about Chloe that made no sense. It made it weird because it didn't fit the sermon. I was going through my notes. Why am I talking about Chloe all of a sudden? 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. This is Paul. He's teaching the Corinthians, and he says, follow my example. Why? Because I'm following Jesus' example. Again, we see that Jesus is our example of how to live this life, how to make it through this life. Jesus showed us what truly holy living looks like. He shows us what it truly means to be Christ-like. He shows us an example of what a true Christian looks like. 
But that was only part of the reason the Father sent the Son. The other was the cross. We know that. He came to bridge that gap between us and God that sin had created. Jesus came to pay the price for our sins, a price that we couldn't pay. He died for our sins. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous and the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Here we see that Jesus died for us, once for our sins, for our past, present, and future, for the sins of the world, all sin. 1 John 3.16 says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Again, we see Jesus set an example. Even in his death, he set an example that we should put others first. Jesus did that for us. He laid down his life for us. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Through Jesus Christ, we get eternal life. God the Father sent his son to be an example for us, to take our place and pay for our sin. What he did for us was the ultimate act of love, love of a father, the love of God. Because, what have happened, because of what happened on the cross, we get to spend eternity in heaven. We get to spend eternity in the place we were designed to spend eternity. This isn't our life. This isn't what God created us for. This is only a moment, just a short time while we're here. But while we're here, we have to make that huge, huge choice to follow God to accept the gift that Jesus bought on that cross. We do that by having a relationship with him, having a relationship with Jesus, the son, having a relationship with God, the father. That relationship is based on love. It's based on God's creating us for that purpose. But it's not easy. It's hard for us here in this world to live like Jesus. Jesus was perfect. It's hard. God knew that. He knows that. Jesus knew that. He knew that we needed something more, something that we could use as a guide, the Holy Spirit. God the Spirit is that helper, is that advocate, is that entity that allows us to understand who God is, to understand the example that Jesus did lived for us. Jesus knew that him dying on the cross was going to be hard for us to comprehend and understand. And so he set, tells us, that he is going to ask the Father to send us a helper. John 14, 26, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. God the Spirit. After Jesus died on the cross, after he was raised from the dead, after he spent 40 days after he was rose from the dead, here on this earth with us, he told us that he would be sending the Spirit. We know in the Old Testament the Spirit looked very differently than what it does in the New Testament today. In the Old Testament, we saw the Spirit coming on people. Here, Jesus is telling us that the Spirit is going to be in us. God is going to be in us. God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is God. 
can live inside of each and every one of us. God the Father who loves us, who sent his son to die for us and to set an example for us, also comes to us to live inside of us. When we accept what Jesus did for us on the cross, when we repent and are baptized, that spirit fills us. Ezekiel 36, 27 says, And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep the law. And again, in Ephesians 1, 13, or 1, 13 through 14, And you also will include, were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guarantee and inheritance upon the redemption of of those who are, God's, or who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. The Spirit lives in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 13. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind can conceive, the things God has prepared for those who love, love him. These are the things God reveals to us by the Holy Spirit. The things that the mind can't comprehend. These are the things that the Holy Spirit reveals to us. The Spirit, the Spirit searches all things with, when the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. I think that's such a great description of the Holy Spirit and how it works inside of us. The Spirit allows us to do and understand and comprehend things that we could never understand on our own. The Spirit is what makes the Scriptures come alive to us. When it says, do not worry, the Spirit is what allows us to not to worry. When we are so broken and do not know what to pray for or think about, the Spirit is what is inside of us that communes with God on our behalf. The Spirit, who is God, is inside of us. To accept things that non-Christians can't even understand is because we have the Spirit that lives inside of us. We can take God's Word and study it and let the Spirit lead us through that. And we'll get a, things out of it that someone on the street that doesn't know who God is will just think we're reading gibberish. The Spirit allows us to understand God because the Spirit is God. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that created the world, lives inside of each other. That is something that is so amazing that it should give you chills. God lives in us. God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, is inside of us. The Trinity allows us to experience God in ways that we never could. The Trinity allows us to commune with God through the Spirit, through His Son, through the Father. This morning, we're going to do things a little different. This morning, we're going to stop right now, and we're going to do communion. Communion is a time that we set aside to remember who Jesus is. Communion is a time we remember who God is. Jesus tells us, do this in remembrance of him. For us to remember what he did for us on the cross. He tells us to remember 
that he gave his life for our lives. That our sins was paid for by him. These are the things he tells us to remember when we do communion. Because it was a debt we couldn't pay. This is the time to do that, to remember Jesus. In a few minutes, the servers are going to pass the trays and the bread and the juice representing his body and blood that he gave for us in our place to pay for our sins, a debt we couldn't pay for ourselves. The gift of grace that he offers each of us, if we accept it, is laid at our feet. Jesus did the work. Grace is the gift. So this morning, if you've accepted that gift of grace for what Jesus did for on the cross, we ask you to join us in communion this morning. But this morning, I want us to remember something else about Jesus. The Son is God. Jesus is God. So when he asks us to remember him, he's asking us to remember God because he is God. So for communion this morning, I want us not only to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross, but I want us to remember God the Father, to remember his love, his love for us, for, our, for the world, and what that Father wants for us to enjoy. Remember that God is a good, good Father. I want us to remember God, the Son, Jesus. I want us to remember what he did for us on the cross, and he also desires that relationship with us. Remember that Jesus wants a relationship with us. And like the Father, he loves us. And I want us to remember God the Spirit who lives inside of us. Who is our guide, who is our helper, who is our advocate. Remember how he loves us and how he changes our lives from the inside out. Communion is a time to remember God all of God. Communion is the time that we get to experience who God is. All of God. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning during this time of communion to celebrate being your child. We come here this morning and remember that you have always been Way before the, we even knew time existed, you were there. We remember that you have always been and will always be. We thank you for your love, the love that you have for each and every one of us and how you only want the best for us. Today, we remember that love, Father. And Jesus, we thank you, our brother for coming and taking our place on the cross and paying a price that we could never pay. We remember your suffering on the cross. We rejoice in the resurrection and the gift of grace that you're offering us. We remember and we thank you, Jesus. And to the Spirit who guides us, we ask you to fill us this morning as we remember why you're here in this room, inside us, to guide us and to direct us. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to experience you, to have this time to commune with you. It's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen.
as we end this series on the Trinity, I hope that we have learned a way to understand who God is a little better. I hope that we have learned how to experience God in a new way, in a more fulfilling way. I spent the first 40 years of my life believing in God, believing in Jesus, but I never allowed myself to truly experience God. I never allowed myself to go beyond that initial belief. I never realized there was something more. At some level, I think I always had a relationship with God and and with Jesus. But it was not a strong relationship. It was a relationship of knowing. We know a lot of things, but do we experience them? Do we allow ourselves to experience them? Even though that I accepted and believed that Jesus was who he said he was, I never allowed the Spirit to guide me. I never allowed the Spirit to interpret the world around me, to show me what was right, what was wrong, to teach me what Jesus' way for my life was. So I spent 40 years... 40, I just realized, 40 years roaming in the desert. (laughs) But then about 15 years ago, things started to change. Things changed because I was in a place where all that was left was God. Everything else had been stripped away. And there I was at the very darkest, lowest spot. And guess who was there with me? Jesus was at my side through that darkest and loneliest time. God, the loving Father, was loving me even when I was not lovable. And during that time, I started to realize that God was enough. God was truly all that I needed. And as I allowed the Spirit to take over, and as I started rereading and restudying, the Spirit led me in ways of understanding. The Spirit led me in ways of communicating with God. The Spirit led me to understand what it truly means to Not worry. When I let Jesus be my example, when I let the Spirit be my guide, this comes alive. I think so many of us, we get that great feeling when we first are saved and we first realize who Jesus is, and we think that's it. And we never get that feeling again. If you think back to when you first accepted Jesus and how that felt, that shouldn't be the only time you experience that. That shouldn't be the only time that you get goosebumps and tears when you first realize who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit was sent to us as a guide to fill us with who Jesus is and who Jesus wants us to be and who that love of the Father. But you have to want it. You have to allow yourself to open up to God. You have to allow yourself to experience God. You have to take time to study God. Since that, I worry less. I really, really do. I'm not perfect at it, but I really, really worry less. Up until about seven months ago, (laughs) things did change a little then. When it was just me working, 
I really could worry, say I worried. I didn't worry about having a job tomorrow. I knew that if I woke up tomorrow in that bottomless pit again, that I would survive it. I wasn't worried about it. If I lost my job, if I lost my house, none of that mattered because God has already proven to me his love for me. And I hope to think, at least think, I know, I'm a much better person than I was than I was 15 years ago. I know that because I allow the Spirit to guide and direct me. I hope that you've taken your relationship with God beyond that beginning. I hope that you have allowed the Spirit to truly come into your life and guide you. I'm telling you this morning, it works. It matters. When you do that, things change. One day I was reading in Psalms that I found a verse that I have held on to. A verse that for many years I would not have understood. A verse now that I have on my heart. It's Psalm 62, verses 1 through 2. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. That's who the Trinity is to me. That's who God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit have shown me. This is the hope that I have for each and every one of you this morning, that you can take that verse and write it on your heart, that you can have the Spirit living in you and guiding you. You can have a relationship with God the Son, with Jesus every single day. You can feel God's love as he provides for you and cares for you. We have to strive to be more Christ-like. What better way than to follow his example? I'm a better person than I was before. It's not me, it's him. It's the spirit. We live in the world, but we don't have to live of the world. So where are you this morning? Are you just a believer that you know who Jesus is, but you haven't opened that gift yet to take full advantage of who he is? Do you know who he is, but you haven't yet developed a relationship with him? God wants us to experience all of him in every aspect of our lives. The Trinity is a way for us to understand and experience God, experience love, the Father, have a relationship with our Savior, the Son, and our guide that will lead us through every day, the Spirit. So this morning, I want to leave you with this thought from 2 Corinthians. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for being there in the pit with me. I thank you for loving me when I was not lovable. I thank you for always going before me, stripping away what I don't need and replacing it with what you know I need. I thank you for a Savior who came and died for me on the cross who gave his life so that I could live, who gave me a gift of grace that when I open it, I can experience things only God can provide. I thank you for the relationship I'm allowed to have with you, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. I invite the Spirit to live inside of me and to rule my world. I pray for courage and wisdom that it will get stronger, and I pray that for everyone in this room that we are brave enough to let the Spirit lead us, to let the Spirit be our guide.
to that relationship with God the Father and the Son. And it's in their name I pray today. Amen.
Well, this morning, we would love to know that you were here. On the right, well, your left-hand side, there's a black book. We ask that you fill that out and just let us know that you were here this morning. Also, in the back of the chairs, there's a prayer card. Prayer is a powerful, powerful thing. It's one of the things that God has given us to commune with him and to ask him for things. Let the Spirit lead you this morning. Fill out that prayer card. Let us pray together as a church. Let's see miracles happen. Our God knows our needs. Ask him for what you need. Drop that into the back if it comes around or in the silver box in the back. This time, I'd like for us to pray for our offering. Father God, we thank you this morning for this opportunity to come and show you our love because we know that you have provided everything that we have and you know what our needs are before we even know what they are. We thank you for always going before us and providing for us and taking care of us because you love us. We ask you this morning to bless this offering, to give us the wisdom and the courage to use it in a way that builds your kingdom, that builds who you are and announces who you are to the unseeing in our neighborhood here in South Scottsdale. We thank you for this opportunity and we pray this in your son's name. Amen. We've got a few things coming up this week or well, yeah, one of them this week. First of all, update on the children's ministry. We are up to $6,000. We have a couple more weeks on that. We're our goal is 7,500. I still think we can do that. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting things for the kids, and um, meeting that goal will make a huge difference in our future of our church. Also, this, uh, this Thursday, uh, we, this past Thursday, we started the SEC Community Connects. We're opening up our building on Thursdays from 10 to 2 to our community, to you guys. We had people playing cards. We had games going on. We had people... Uh, what do you do with the two sticks? Knitting. That's it. I wouldn't say. Cr- <laughs> <laughs> we had all. <laughs> every drum- hey, yeah, every was drumming. Uh, we're opening our building up. We just want to be a place for people to come, to hang out, to enjoy each other. We had people sharing their lunch with each other. It was just a great time. We had several people here. We want to see that continue to grow. So come check out Thursdays. And we're just going to be hanging out and opening up our building to our community. This Saturday, the men are going to be cleaning our street. I need you to sign up this morning. It's over there on, by the wall, the silver wall over there. Sign up so we can uh, kind of get a, a number of how many people we'll have. We'll be meeting here at 7.30 on Saturday morning. Once we're done, we're going to go down to Denny's and have breakfast. It should take us about an hour. It's an easy thing, guys. It just makes us look good. Uh, also... <laughs> Because we have these people on the street, and they have businesses, and they clean up in front of their own business anyway. Also, on the 31st, we're going to be doing trunk or treat again. This is an opportunity for us to let the community know we're here. It's also a place for parents to safely allow their kids to go. There's so many things now people are afraid to just to knock on a blind door. That's dangerous. This gives them, they're going to be trick or treating anyway. So this gives us a chance to give parents a safe place to go. We invite you, bring your candy here instead of setting it home behind a door because kids, some kids don't do that anymore. They'll come to something like this or to the festivals in the park. Let us show our community that we love them and that we're here. Hope everyone has a great week. If you need to talk to me about who Jesus is, who God is, who the Spirit is, do not leave this morning without knowing what your next step needs to be or if you need prayer or whatever it is. See me after the service. I'll be in the lobby. Now have a great week. Thanks, Tom. Please stand with us. Please.
this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. Let our faith be more Bless you. Have a great week and see you in 15 minutes for Phil's Bible study.